to another session of Real Talk. And Matt, you're here again. I you're am. the best. Thank oh, goodness. Happy to be here again. Awesome. It's great. Yeah. I'm very happy to have you here. Yeah. So I want to talk to you about sellers, your expectations, and what's been happening in the market. Sure. So year to date, you know, up to September, we've had 2,633 homes sold. Yeah. Out of that, uh, 1,119 of the homes sold uh, under asking. Under ask. Right. And there was 225 at ask. Yeah. So where do you think, is it because, um, you know, sellers are, you know, have different expectations. They still want to catch the whirlwind of the crazy market that we had for two years ago. Is the agent buying the listing? Yeah. Um, you know, or is it just a, a multitude of factors what's happening in our market? You know, I, it's, we're back to how it normally operates here, right? Yes. Uh, is what I would say, right? And so, you know, uh, agents and uh, sellers do their very best to put a pr price on a home that people are going to be attracted to. That's mm -hmm. the way that it's always worked. We've, we've always worked very hard to figure out, hey, this is the value. Let's go portray that to the public. And then the public always will uh, kind of come in with the presumption that there's a little bit of wiggle room there, a little bit of negotiation. And for years and years and years and years, that's how it worked. And in a balanced market, there is that sort of negotiation. Uh, during COVID, we got way out of way out of balance. Oh, there was no balance. Yeah, and so sellers had all the authority, all the power, and they could just command whatever they wanted there. And uh, even if they listed at the at the price that they they thought was maybe the right value, they were still getting offers. You know, sometimes hundreds of thousand dollars oh, over yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I believe that we're back to a normal market cycle where, you know, you do your best to put the right price on a home. There's still going to be the perception that there's a little bit of room to work, uh, work with there. And we're going to see this as, the, as sort of the norm going forward is that you know, yeah. most homes are going to sell for a, a, a percentage between sort of 96 and 98 percent of what they are listed at. Funny that you mentioned that number. Uh, so prior to COVID, uh, when I was sitting with a seller, uh, you're going to sell at 97 percent of asking yep. price. That I could, you know, yep. Yep. during COVID. How much money do you want to make on your house? Yeah. You want to get six hundred? Okay, we're going to list at four seventy-five. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I go into a house, and uh, and granted, any time I do a market analysis on a house, it takes me a few hours. Yeah. I'm looking at fifty yeah. pictures. I'm writing notes on everything, yeah. and uh, I feel over well, not overcome, but I feel very confident in my number when I'm sitting in front of the seller. Yep. Yeah. And you know, I just went on a listing appointment, and they had just purchased their house. Yeah last year yeah. and and they did a few things and so um, you know realistically speaking I'm thinking in the 900s but I know if I said the 900s I'm gonna get shut down yes so yeah. I called one of my buddies at Royal Page and I'm like hey you know I know you have a listing yeah um, uh, you know out here in um, uh, you know out here what are your thoughts of this house yep. and the price so we both agreed on a price yep and I went in and the seller agreed with me, right? Uh, and even at that price at 1.1, yeah. I was way over. Yeah. Uh, I, and, and I knew that. Yeah. And another two other agents came in behind me, yeah. $200,000 over. Over what you thought, what, yeah. you, what you would sort of jazz about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, so, and I, I was flabbergasted because mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't see the comparables yeah. to that. Yeah. Because market value is not based on what is actually active. Yeah. It's what's sold. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah because we don't have well, this, buyers anymore. Right? Uh, 100%. It's, it's local people who know the market. They're not stupid. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the biggest challenges that's always existed there is that uh, some people in the industry uh, believe it's a good practice to try and just, I would say, you know, a fluff up the seller a little bit there by offering uh, uh, an opinion of value that's higher than what they actually perceive it to be, right? And it's really important for sellers to think about, um, you know, what is it that you are judging the people coming in to talk to you about selling your home uh, on? What are you judging them on? Are you judging them on, are you going to give me the highest price uh, of anyone who walks in here? Because I can, I can count pretty high and I will make Absolutely. up the highest number I could come, come up with. Uh, or are you going to come and uh, uh, come researched with what you think is the appropriate price? Are you going to give me a marketing plan that's going to work? Are you going to represent my best interest all the way along? And if those are the things that you're uh, measuring on, then I think you're going to end up in a good relationship with someone. Because if all you're measuring on is who's going to give me the highest price, well, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Because I get stressed. Yeah, it's just it, it's just it's so often it doesn't come true, right? And uh, and I know one of the things that I love that you measure is. Um, not just the, 
the sale price versus where it was last listed, but the sale price versus where it was originally listed, meaning yes. how many times have they brought the price down before they finally enact a sale. And uh, each time they bring it down, that represents a moment of disappointment for a seller. So right, because I, and I know a, a lot step. of people don't, they just look at the listing price versus the selling Absolutely. price, but it's the original the price. The original price is relevant. And yep. you know, I've seen agents like where, uh, you know, there was one particular listing that was sold this year that would have sold, um, a million dollars under. Yep. 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 And yep. several of them, uh, typically anything over uh, a million is going to, you know, uh, what was yep. it, a couple of hundred thousand yep. usually. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And there was another property that was out in, I don't know, East Over. Yeah. Listed at nine ninety nine. Yep. Sold for five seventy five. Well, this is it, right? Yeah. And, but uh, like that is such a disparity. Such a huge disparity. Fifty percent or sixty percent is not uh, not the expectation of negotiation that you should have, right? It should be higher than. Uh, you should have a higher expectation of you know being within five five percent ten percent, you know. And to be fair to agents, this is a difficult time to price, right? And to be Absolutely. fair to sellers, I understand the neighbor effect where the neighbor says, "Well, you should list it for two hundred thousand dollars more than that." Didn't you hear about uh, Jimmy around the corner who got that? And um, and that's really hard to turn off. I understand all that, but yep. that's why you have the professional coming in who brings you actual data about what sold. What else is on the market you're competing with? And you have a, a, a real discussion about what's the right strategy for you. You know, there's so many websites now. Uh, again, um, I've always said this this, yep. this year. We are in a seller's market with a buyer yep. mentality. Yep. Nova Scotians are very, um, they know our market. They're on websites where they get you know, what it was listed at, yep. they see the selling price, and they see everything that's happening around yeah. that. That's right. So yeah. they know. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I mean, is that turning a buyer off? Maybe. Oh, sorry. A buyer off. From, yeah. A, is yeah. it turning a buyer off from putting in an offer? Yeah. It could. Yes. It could. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, and you know, one of the challenges with data and information, like you're saying, there's, there's tons of data out there for people now, is that uh, I'm drawn to data that uh, supports my belief, right? And so if I, if I look around and say, um, you know what's what's what is everything selling here for? And there's a range between uh, eight hundred thousand and six hundred thousand. Uh, and I'm a seller. Well, I pay more attention to the eight hundred thousands in that range. If I'm yeah. the buyer doing the same exercise on the same neighborhood, looking at the same data, I'm really attracted to the six hundred thousand uh, dollar ones, Absolutely. right? And so that's where the professional comes in and helps uh, bring that uh, that gap together. Yeah. Now, um, so one uh, or two of the driving factors are. I mean, we had a lot of interprovincial yep. migration during COVID, which yep. is not really apparent anymore. Not yeah. And, yeah. you know, uh, the foreign buyer band, right? So there's so many restrictions. So the foreign buyer band yep. is right up till next December 2024. Yep. Do you think it's going to still be in effect after that? You know, I've, I've come to believe that most restrictive legislation is hard to get out. Uh, so things like rent control and, uh, you know, restrictions on foreign buyers. Um, it doesn't just go away. Uh, I don't see you know, it going away. I, I'm not sure I see it either. either. Yeah. So, so you know, while it's it's only legislated through that right now, I, I do believe that there is, um, if there's still similar conditions to what we're seeing, and it's unfortunately that's a federal one, uh, so it's across the country we're talking about mm -hmm. here. Um, it could it could absolutely be extended, right? And uh, I would I wouldn't be shocked to see that. Yeah. No, we've had the conversations uh, here at home that, you know, again, I feel that it's going to uh, be extended for sure. Yep. Uh, and I mean, there are still people who are moving here. Yeah. We have our regular military moves, you know, yep. deaths, divorce, jobs. Absolutely. Uh, you yep. know, that still does happen. Um, but, you know, a lot of sellers aren't selling because there is nowhere to, nowhere go. to go. Nowhere to go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We still have tight vacancy, uh, you know, hard to find a rental. Um, and it's, it's just as hard to go find another place to buy. So, so my thing, I'm very grateful, um, with the HST mm -hmm. that the new, um, the new policy or program yep. that they're implementing for, yep. uh, high rises. Yep. Uh, we were talking with our builder. Why not do something for the builder? I think he quoted me that was around six, Sixteen thousand dollars with the permits yep. for every house that was pulled. Yep, that's and of right. course that price is going back to the consumer. It does yeah, and it's driving the price up. Yep. So why can't even provincially? Yeah. We offer something to the residential developers so the prices wouldn't have to be as high as they are. You know, it's interesting because they the, the the government tends to try and address the I would say the um, 
the portion of society that is struggling the most, right? And yeah. so when you think about uh, who would be struggling the most, it's people who can't afford uh, a dwelling at all, right? Yes. And so, you know, we're talking about homelessness, we're talking about people who are in and out of shelters or on government assistance in that respect. So the next step for those people is typically to find an affordable rental. Uh, and that's why you, you see the high rise stuff come in, right? Where they yeah. make it um, more manageable for the people who are gonna build purpose-built rentals to uh, build properties. because. Adding more to the market should mean that prices uh, on rents get sustained. Yep. But it, it, it does have to flow all the way up to people who want to buy homes as well, right? Because mm -hmm. again, you just said it. If there's nowhere for me to go out of my rental into a home, I can't afford to go into a home because those costs remain high. Well, I'm not going to leave my rental and it's not going to free up the space that naturally should be freed up to uh, allow people to leave mom and dad's home or who are uh, in, a, in an underhoused situation to get into a, a reasonably priced rental. So it is a big chain and people have to be moving all the way through Absolutely. the chain for it not to choke off at some point. And so I think your idea is a good one. Uh, you know, that you're, you're talking about uh, revenue for the province or the municipality in that case. Everyone's always a little sticky when it comes to giving I up know, revenue, but, but, uh, but it should drive more tax. It should drive a bigger tax base. It should do all those things. And so but it just should... look at the deed transfer tax that yeah. was uh, you know, that was collected yep. during COVID. Absolutely. That was like, that was probably, I mean, I don't know how far yeah. over their budget that it yeah. was. Yeah. But, you know. Well, and you know the stat from way back when we were all in real estate school is that every time someone spends a dollar on uh, on a home, 20 to 40 cents gets spent on furniture and renovations oh, and yeah. other things, right? So housing is a huge spur of an economy. It spurs on economy in a tremendous way. And so uh, you don't want to see it slow down dramatically or to a crawl uh, to a snail's pace, right? Like you want it to continue on because it does drive so many other industries, right? But there's and, a lot of builders slowing down this year. We just had a... Um, uh, uh, a builder here that time talking with my husband yeah. and they are one of the busiest yeah. uh, who, in 2023 yeah. and he said yeah we're pulling back of course yeah like when you think about it uh, the cost of everything has gone up so you felt you felt the pain of inflation and to combat inflation what we've done is we've raised interest rates right and yeah. so now my cost of borrowing is higher while I continue to pay a lot uh, for each piece of lumber that I buy there aren't, it just doesn't make sense to build these, uh, build these, whether it's multifamilies or single family homes, like you have to either charge a higher price or not build them for the time being, right? And so that's really a, a tough spot for builders to be in. And, and we can't ask builders to, you know, operate out of the goodness of their heart. They're yeah. a for-profit business and they have to go out and generate uh, uh, a bottom line like every other business out there. So it's, 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 it's certainly, a a, I think, a catch-22 for, uh, for all parties who are involved. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky uh, problem to have to solve. But, I mean, I think that the idea of trying to spur on ways in which we can create more supply is a win for everybody because we still have people moving to the country yep. and moving and specifically to us moving to our province we have people having kids and those kids are growing up and those kids are wanting to go out and we have a big generation of people who want to get into housing mm -hmm. and so the only way to truly solve it is to create more housing options and uh, and so any, pretty simple. It, it does seem simple but uh, incentivizing it is tough absolutely well thank you once again matt for your time my pleasure as always thank, thank you, you. Yeah.